I love orcs, space orcs, fantasy orcs. I just love them, but I don't love Games Workshop's fantasy orcs. Their beefy silhouette is kind of cool, but they just don't spark joy, which is probably why I've only painted a single mini from this box. And while I love all the space orcs, or bruisers, from my friends at Gear Guts Mech Shop, their wreckers, the fantasy line, kind of feel more like ogres to me. I'll still be painting some, but not today. One day, while trying to convince myself to paint these iron jaws, I got a message from Raven Crow Minis. Hey Jared, I know you like orcs. Want to paint some? Think Warcraft. Now time for some deep, caffeinated lore. Like millions of others, I spent many hours, hundreds of hours, playing World of Warcraft. So maybe it's the amount of time spent in that world, but I do love that aesthetic. I even like the Warcraft movie, even if it's something the internet likes to hate on. So when I saw these files, I got real excited. There's a lot of them, and they are awesome. While I wanted to print them all, that really wasn't going to happen for this video. So I printed off the Warmonger, the Warlock, and the Warlord. My friend Zambi seems to think Warcry is great, and I thought these three might be an interesting warband to give it a try. With these three fellas assembled, I began underpainting them exactly like I have for all the recent orcs with purple, specifically dark purple, purple, and magenta. Due to all the fur that these guys were wearing, I wanted to put them in a chilly, kind of moonlit environment. And so to stir up the comment section, I started in on their blue skin. If you've seen any of my other videos, I'm sure you're sick of hearing this, but underpainting like this completely changed my relationship with painting. That combined with my sketchy brush strokes is what makes my paint jobs feel like, well, mine. After laying down the base colors, the underpainting, I'll mix some of each into whatever color I want to end up with. In this case, light gray blue. Then I'll just follow the underpainting, kind of like a map. Adding more and more of the blue, I'll get to the color of the skin in a way that makes sense and isn't jarring or distracting. This also allows me to spend less time on less important aspects, like the back, without it feeling half done. The areas in shadow naturally have fewer details and less contrast. To finish off this blue skin, I added a hint of pale yellow for some of the brightest points of light. These big fellas have various fabrics, furs, and straps on them. All of which needed to be various shades of brown and gray, keeping them quite neutral so as not to take away from the face, armor, and the weapons. For these I used dark and light umber, and dark neutral gray, mixing in some magenta to each to blend them into the rest of the model, then mixing in pale yellow to brighten each of them. For all the various metallic parts, I wanted to go with gold and silver-ish metals. The swords, regardless of size or brokenness, would be silver, or at least grey. While trim on the armor and clothes and various accessories would be gold. Metal tends to be the exception in my underpainting method, as in I tend not to mix any of the underpainted colors in. I just go straight over with my base of choice. For all the gold, it was light umber. Then a mix of light umber and golden brown. Then golden brown, finally adding pale yellow to the golden brown. For the silver or gray metal, I start with a dark mix of dark and bright neutral gray. Working my way up to pure bright neutral gray for the very brightest points. I will say this in every video, I do not do any blending. I use sketchy brush strokes and let them be seen. I genuinely like the look and ultimately the process. Not just because I can be lazy and continue to use brushes after they've lost their fine tip. And particularly on things I'm trying to make metallic in appearance, I'll let quite a bit of the underpainted color remain. I think it's visually interesting, I enjoy doing it, 
And when I get the highlights in the right areas, it still reads how I want it to. Now, I don't always get it right, but as I do it more and more, I get closer each time. I'm just learning to iterate and not be too critical of myself. Now, these models I'm painting today, and a whole lot more, are available as part of Raven Crow Mini's Frontiers campaign on my mini factory. And I absolutely love all of these sculpts. This Orc Hordes army set has options for 10 warriors, 5 brutes, 3 wolf riders, 3 heroes, the warlord, and this giant, and I mean giant, black dragon. In addition, there are add-ons such as these Orc camp buildings and these Alliance swordsmen. Jump on the Frontier now at a nice discount because after April 29th, the prices go up. Thank you Raven Crow Minis for sponsoring mediocre hobby content. Now, back to the video. These chilly, moonlit minis needed some bases to match. Thankfully, Raven Crow also has these bases available as a stretch goal. To stick with the chilly theme, I hose these down with dark gray blue. Starting to define these rocky formations. Picking up the brush, I slapped on some cool grays, making some bluey gray rocks. Then glued these guys down to their bases. To finish off this cold look, I needed some snow. My go-to snow recipe is combining the Army Painter Snow and PVA glue. Then scoop it onto the base, feet, boots, whatever I think needs it. Somewhere in this process I got a bit cocky and printed off these brutes, which are super excellent sculpts, but to see these fellas get some paint on them, you'll need to tune into my Instagram where I post daily videos, the 5am diaries, because my pup wakes me up at 5am every day. So are these orcs better than Games Workshops? I think so, but ultimately, I'm just happy there are more options for our tabletop games. But I want to know what you think. Do you like these more than Games Workshops? Are there others you like more? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks to Raven Crow Minis for making cool things and sponsoring hobby content. Be sure to check out the campaign at the link in the description. As always, if you made it this far, you are an absolute champion. If you liked the video, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe for more mediocre hobby content. And thanks for watching. You are awesome. And I'll see you in the next one.